in listen-only mode. Very good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, and uh, today's focus will be on trend lines and uh, the live market, of course, looking at the Forex market and your dollar, etc. Before we do that, though, be aware of these disclaimers. First of all, attend, saying that one of the, say, sorry, excuse me, saying that this webinar is intended for a global audience and may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out more about that and other conditions and details. The other disclaimer says explains that trading for exchange or global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for uh, information on educational purposes only. We're continuing watching this webinar or recording. You are agreeing with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty, good. Thank you so much for your attention. We're going to take a look at uh, some information regarding, uh, for instance, the calendar to take a look at uh, what we have lined up for this week. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. First of all, today we have uh, a lot of news events, but let's take a look if there are any red tagged events all the way, actually more tomorrow, in fact. Australia almost tomorrow. <clears throat> so not a lot going on today. But this week, certainly some uh, interesting events like Bank of, no, that was just last week. Bank of Canada had a, a rate, but it was the Swiss he has a rate that this week. Uh, let's see, the New Zealand has. And the pound has also a bank rate. So there are three of them this week. So pretty busy schedule. And some USD news on Friday. Next week, of course, we got a biggie on the U.S., which has its uh, FOMC moment and a potential rate hike coming up on Wednesday. So a lot of things to uh, to expect this and next week. And then I guess slowly but surely then two weeks from now, we're already in the week of Christmas and the week after in the week of New Year's Eve. And volatility and price movements could slow down during those two weeks. Historically, that has happened uh, quite regularly and there's a substantial noticeable difference so be aware of that all right other things that I want to take a look at before taking a look at the uh, market uh, be aware that uh, Nenneth and I started a, a actually it's a it's a weekly blog uh, once a week we write an article here about uh, trading and our opinions not about technical issues but About other things here you can see for instance how to overcome seven deadly trading sins so if you're interested in that you can find it by going to analytics and traders blog the other thing I wanted to let you know sorry about this but uh, there is a updated MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition with uh, additional six features and I think you'll really like these features I found them very interesting uh, there one of the features is actually uh, that you can use multiple exits by using lines, horizontal lines. So you can put a horizontal line on the chart and make it a uh, an exit point, like if take profit or stop loss. And you can even have a time stop by putting a, a vertical line on the chart. So not only horizontal lines. Oh, wait, I don't have my drawing to open. Well, horizontal line is flat, right? Or uh, not only flat lines, but also standing up lines. And uh, a day would then be an, a time exit, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think that I've, I've never seen that anywhere. I think that's really, truly unique, uh, like many of these features are, in fact, uh, unique or at least very supportive and very useful. Um, so if you like time aspect like I do, then that could be something for, for you as well. Um, the other... Just a few more things. I mean, these are not new things necessarily. Oh, one, one more new thing, actually. Uh, that's their very good order history, you can see. And there's also an indicator that shows how much time is left to the next bar. That, I think, is, is a very useful one. Because, you know, it's, you have to always calculate, like, when is this bar finished? Of course, with the hourly candle is not maybe that difficult, but with a four-hour candle sometimes, yes. Just very useful, I think, personally. There are some other things that... Um, uh, just like supportive things that 
are easy for traders that are maybe not so used to adding indicators like a high-low indicator, like a pivot point indicator, like a Renko uh, chart, which other traders might have already, but some of you might have difficulties get, or some people have difficulties adding, and those are then already there to be found. All right. So check it out. There are about almost 70 of them. Now, you probably won't need all 70, but I'm sure there are, uh, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that you might find interesting. So take a look. If you have a MetaTrader 4 Supreme, you can download the new edition already. All right. All right. Let's take a look at the market. And once again, you can find that by going to trading platforms, right? MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. Good morning, Beverly. Yeah, the market indeed very wacky uh, last year as well on the holidays. Great. Cool. Yeah, I, I uh, did have it frozen now, indeed. So let's take a look at. Euro dollar, big upside on Thursday, finally, uh, something that kind of kept in the back of our minds as we were analyzing this chart because of uh, many factors, divergence, falling wedge, big monthly support level at 104.5. So there was kind of, uh, you know, good evidence that uh, a rebound could happen. And... Sometimes, unfortunately, these rebounds, the, the technicals do occur at big news events, which is in a way a pity because uh, therefore I'm not really uh, joining the, the party that much because I don't like to trade during these events. It's too wacky, too, too volatile. So the upside happened without me. Well, that's okay. There are always other trades to be found. And uh, it was a big bullish momentum and price obviously showing about 400 pips to the upside for, or 450 and now slowly but surely retracing back to the downside making kind of what could be a, a bull flag basically right chart pattern here like this it's a corrective channel but it could easily be a bull flag as long as it stays above at, at the very max the 50 fib as long as it stays above the 50 uh, I would say this is still a bullish zone if it breaks below the 50, if it breaks below this long-term moving average here, then uh, I'm more cautious and price could stall, start to fall in between these fibs from the 50 to the 61.8, perhaps then further. These, these fibs will still remain bouncing spots. Uh, and uh, they could provide a a rebound a pretty strong rebound but also price could break below them and keep falling so basically it's a more of a neutral zone I would say here price will, <coughs> excuse me price would have to really break below 105.20 and then 104.50 before I'm really interested in shorts or sorry let me rephrase that before I consider this to be a stronger downtrend I would still potentially look for shorts very cautiously in the blue zone and neutral zone at uh, especially between the 61.8 and the 78.6 fib because that's a bit of a bigger zone there all right that's the downside the upside I would say is still prevalent as long as price as I said remains and respects remains above and respects these these support Fibonacci levels and uh, I Consider it this resistance trend line to be still uh, in place. So I would expect price to kind of respect uh, this zone, make a bit of a, a downside, and then perhaps break through it. If that happens, then a breakout of that resistance part of the bull flag looks interesting. <clears throat> so let's see if that happens. I would like to see price actually stop here, make a small dip, and then start to climb and break. If it starts to uh, break the second time here, I think that's an interesting breakout trade. What kind of break would I would like to see? Basically, I would like to see a candle, uh, an hourly or perhaps four-hour candle, uh, 
uh, above this blue line, something like this. The blue line indicating the trend line. And basically the majority of the candle outside of it and a close near the high. Preferably a bit stronger candle as well. So that would be, I think, a signal of continuation uh, on this this upside. Now, Wei has an interesting point. Hi, Wei, good to see you again. That the spike could be something maybe of a false kind of move up, or or maybe not false, but uh, it was just a retracement, and then we could expect maybe more downside. And Wei is referring to the 5th of June, 2014. And yeah, that that's always a possibility indeed. So from that point of view, uh, let's take a look at it from that point of view. All right. Uh, I think that there's no way for sure to know, as always, which one it will be. And I think the only answer, or at least in my opinion, the only answers that we can use are either waves or uh, to, to have an idea if this is a retracement or a correction. For instance, we could use trend lines and just use them as borders and say, okay, if price goes through this area, uh, it's probably going to be a continuation. If price goes through this area, it's probably going to be a downtrend continuation. Uh, so I guess we have to just use tools and monitor uh, what price is, is indicating to us as most likely. Uh, at this moment, considering various factors, like for instance, the monthly bottom here, uh, considering the um, I would say the corrective nature so far and a trend line a bit higher on the daily I would probably think that an upside at ABC zigzag is the most likely but for that to happen for me to be interested I would like to see a breakout above this bull flag which is still a bit of a shaky not a perfect bull flag uh, not a decent looking bull flag to be honest but a break above the bull flag, that would my, be my kind of signal that probably the ABC or zigzag or continuation of the bullish momentum is more likely. And if price breaks below these fibs, then I'm more cautious. That's probably, I think, the best, as I already said, I think that's the only way to really measure it. The other thing could be time factor. This is uh, a strong bullish candle on the daily, strong weekly candle as well, engulfing more or less three weeks before it. So strong bullish engulfing weekly. So candles like that do support more of a zigzag development than a, a false move or a retracement move up. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, time factor, sorry. Basically, if six days do not break this high, then yeah, that could be weakness. And we could see something like that. Obviously, also, it uh, would be good to see the move I happened this week, in fact, the break happened this week because next week there will be a big dollar news event that price could really uh, go sideways for a lengthy time prior to that news event, just an anticipation of that event because uh, everyone knows that that's going to be a deal breaker or <laughs> a deal maker, uh, depending on your view. But in any case, it's going to be a, an event that has a high potential to impact the market. And when that when that kind of event is so close, the market could really die down, even on Monday already, I would say. Sometimes it happens if it's really a big one. And I would say this is a really big one. Arne is asking about the wave count. So basically, uh, on an hourly chart, I would say this ended a, a wave five, most likely of a C. If, if my 
uh, bullish idea here of continuation is correct. And I would expect that this is an A. I'm expecting that this is a B, and here's a C. You can see that just quickly, folks, for those that don't like waves. You can see that here too, by the way. ABC zigzag potential after bull flag break. And you can see here two, three, four, five. A, B, C. You can find that. You can find the wave count by going to analytics and the wave analysis. And then you'll see the one hour chart right here. All right, back to trend lines. So what are the most important trend lines, I think, for, for this? Because that's the main topic for today. The most important trend line is this resistance trend line on the weekly, connecting these resistance spots. That's an important one, I would say. Even broken trend lines could be important, so we can extend this one. There is kind of a confluence right there. But more importantly, I think, is the minus 272 target and log to moving average. There's the minus 61.8 target. So these trend lines are important. These have been broken. That's the falling wedge. And now it's th these two, really, this bull flag. So let's see how price responds here. I would expect a small dip. All right, pound USD had some interesting trend lines too. This was a break I didn't like too much last week. Unfortunately, I didn't like it too much, but sometimes, uh, as you can see, ignoring some breaks uh, leading to a failure to, to trade it nicely to the downside. Unfortunately, it was a good move. And uh, that can happen sometimes when I'm overemphasizing maybe a retracement that turns into only just a, a one leg here instead of a, the anticipated three leg correction that I was hoping for. And uh, underestimated the power of uh, the break of this support line. And uh, price falling nicely, but still making a rally up a bit lower just because there was a, a pretty big support trend line here. A big, trend line support zone roughly in here and price did um so you know how do you say that uh, respect sorry that's the word i'm looking for respect that zone and made a bounce off the bottom so yeah there was not a lot of space that was true though because it did bounce pretty heftily from that level so the downtrend channel is still intact as you can see by these trend lines price is now roughly in the lower quarter if we would put a trend line that's in the middle like this trend channels it's good to have a, a middle line to see if, if that's respected is price stopping at that line it's just an extra kind of thing you can analyze and if price is respecting it then the channel is, is you know is, is better perhaps than without respects this one seems to be okay-ish there's sometimes here a bit here Here's a bit of a pause too, and here, and here, but not everywhere. Oh, here too. It's okay. -ish. I've seen better, but still okay. And the price now seems to be approaching the lower quarter because if we then put another trend line like this, we can put it even in quarters. Oh. And what we want to avoid is, is shorting in the lower quarter. And this this break was very close to the lower quarter was just just a tad above it though that's good but it's not the best to short in the lower quarter because you're so close to support and you get more of a chance of a bounce than uh, than a continuation sometimes price does manage to break below it but in those cases if you get a break below the channel or above the channel it's typically kind of the beginning of a trend not when the trend channels this established and has that many hits. And the reason is because if a channel is just starting, 
like this, and you get an up and a down and up and a down. The channel is quite narrow. It doesn't have much space. So often it, this could be a, a bear flag, but the other option is that it's it, it's a turn of a, a trend, and to get more space, price kind of expands by going above it and then again continuing. So what happens is that the old resistance line, in fact, becomes the middle line of the expanded channel. Does everyone see that? I know it is a bit confusing with all those lines. But that's when an expansion, a break of resistance, and an expanded channel makes a lot of sense. This could happen with the pound dollar too. I'm not saying it's impossible. Because uh, from a wave perspective, if it breaks through the support, there could be an acceleration. So in this case, I would definitely uh, be open to it just from a wave perspective. But on average, let's say, uh, when the channel is disestablished, the break into the direction of the trend is, uh, is not as great because often enough, okay, it can accelerate a bit, but often it's overthrow or underthrow, in this case an underthrow, and it just would return back to, to the mean. Most of the time. But in this case, it could be a bit different. So important trend lines, this, this bottom. Bouncer break spot. And uh, ultimately, even, uh, of course, also this resistance all right in here. Because the opposite is true for the top quarter, in the downtrend at least. The top quarter is the interesting zone for shorts in a downtrend. The bottom zone is interesting for longs in uptrend. So this is the channel that's going on on, on, on the pound. It's pretty neat. And uh, a bit of overthrow here is an example of an overthrow. And I don't mind cutting through a bit of price action when building a trend line, when, when drawing a trend line or building a channel as long as uh, as the trend line itself becomes better, either we get more hits, uh, either, um, let's see, we have a better angle. So in this case, we have both. We have a better angle, a, a steeper angle, which is for a trend channel better, and we have more hits. Now, I don't mind actually drawing two trend lines even on, or a channel and a trend line, because often enough, it's more like a zone than an exact line, right? Just like moving averages are a zone. <clears throat> They're not precise precision points. Fibonacci is different. Fibonacci tends to be more indeed of uh, a level where we can really count on one precise level. Even with Fibonacci, we have price going a bit through it, right? I think the most obvious levels that are uh, precise are round levels, like 140, 130, and uh, second category would be tops and bottoms. These trend lines are not really relevant. When drawing trend lines, they, they still have to be relevant, otherwise why have them on the chart? Our chart would just get clustered with too many, uh, too many things on the chart. So I can take those away because this trend channel is more important than those resistance trend lines, which are way, way far away from price, right? So um, that's a bit about trend channels. Let's go down to the four hour chart. And uh, we're in close to the quarter line here. And uh, could we have a similar break basically as we had here? We, here we had uh, a rally from the, from the bottom. Here we had a rally from the bottom quarter. And we got a bit of a triangle here and here and two breaks into that last quarter before getting a bigger bounce here again. Could we have a similar one? Well. We zoom into the hourly, we see that we really don't have a similar trend line like we had here. All right, so let me take that away now. You can see the difference. The difference is that the trend lines are not pointing to the downside, like this. It's like a channel to the downside. So it's like, a, in a way, a, a bull flag as well on the pound. All right, now we talk a bit about this fib first so I can remove it. Basically, if we take this move down to this move, which is the top of the channel, down to the bottom of the channel, price stopped at the 38.2 fib and caused a retracement. 
but the retracement, as you can see, has been corrective so far. We're back at the opposite, 23.6, which is probably halfway the upside. We'll take a look in a second. Could that be a balancing spot, perhaps up to the 50 and middle line, which seems to be a resistance spot there? Not the middle line, actually. It's the quarter line, quarter zone. Yes, so the 50 fib there, I think, is a strong resistance spot. Let me take it away now. Go down to the hourly again. I put the fib on this upside recently here. I get the fib right here. 50 fib. So, yeah, that uh, could be the bouncing spot already. It's kind of just missed it a bit, but probably close enough to be considered a 50 fib hit. Let me take a look exactly here. This is about 3, 9, 3, 7. Yeah, probably close enough. So, we have an impulse. We got a slow downside correction. And those certainly can be bull flags or corrections. Doesn't have to be, right? Sometimes it does not necessarily have to be that this always must be a impulse when followed by correction and impulse. No, it doesn't have to be. It could be, in some cases, we do see bullish impulse, bearish correction, and then bearish impulse. It does happen. Don't get me wrong. That's why a break of, of these fibs Break of 23.6 could see a fall down to 38.2 fib, right? What happened actually yesterday? Look here, this this one candle filled up that gap right there. You see that? And then we had a consolidation zone again. And once we broke the 38.2 fib, we had a slow downside. I actually just missed the 50. So if we break the 50. Maybe a bit of a slower downside at 61.8. There's more space here yet again, right there. All right. The alternative is the alternative is a break of the bull flag here to the upside. We got about a couple of hits here. But those are pretty far away. So I would like to see a recent hit, just like with the euro dollar. And then a, a, a break later on. So from my perspective, it looks like that I would like to trade a euro dollar pound dollar break to the upside, but because we're looking at hourly chart, I would probably like to trade it in New York session. Because for it for price to make it up, a small down and a break, that's gonna take at least some hours, probably several hours. Uh, Ray, this, this webinar is recorded and uploaded to uh, YouTube. And you just need to look for uh, Admiral Markets. And uh, go to their YouTube channel and you'll see the uploaded web webinars. But you'll also see the playlists and all the, all the webinars. And you can look per category as well through those playlists. All right. Anyhow, so if price does make that break, sorry if I'm a bit uh, slow with uh, the pound USD. If it does break, then I would expect price to go up and complete an ABC zigzag up to the minus 272 target. And the bottom of the top quarter line. Now, this particular angle on the weekly chart of that channel is looking corrective, to be honest. As this has more pace to the upside, there is a chance if we do break above the, the channel that we can actually do this and correct higher. But this is very high time frame analysis, and uh, 
it's just something to keep an eye on uh, for the next few months. If something that were to happen like that, then you have an idea maybe why it's happening. But this is not something very important for this week. All right, dollar again is in a, uh, in a range like this. Sideways, so trend lines, well, basically the resistance, obviously, and support. And those are the main main levels there. This is kind of a, a consolidation zone box. There was an implementum to the upside prior to it, so it could break to the upside and hit resistance. And I would be careful of that resistance zone. I'm not a big fan of the dollar yen. I don't see anything really that I would like to trade at the moment. So I will continue. If you see something, let me know. If you would like to discuss a trade, I'm all ears. If you have a trade idea, uh, you can also send a screenshot and we can take a look at it. And maybe I would like it too. I don't know. But at the moment, I myself don't see anything. Uh, audio is the... Uh, in my Monday video, uh, I was talking about euro dollar, pound dollar bounces off those fibs, which seems to be happening, right, as we see. I also talked about the odd USD bounce off of this support trend line, and that hasn't happened yet, or hasn't happened at all, sorry, and will never happen because the price broke through it. Um, and um, basically, there was no reaction here to that level. It, the candle certainly didn't show any bounce. It sort of break actually with this candle. And you can see price breaking through the 50 to the 61.8, kind of stalling here, making a bit of a bounce, and then falling again to the 78.6 fib. All right. Despite the break of this support level, I still think there is reason to, to see support in general. Well, one of them is this, but that's pretty far. Uh, the other trend line, we can use this one, but that's pretty far. It's like an expanding wedge. We can connect these tops, perhaps, like this. Now, price did test it, but really didn't break through it. Let's zoom in. You see, not really a break there. So that could still be a bouncing spot, actually. Um, well, it has already been a bouncing spot, sorry. All right. Uh, other trend line could be when we connect these three bottoms. And on a daily chart, price is right there. On a four-hour chart, price is still there. This is not a breakout, in my opinion, as yet especially because moving average is right there as well. So this is, price is probably at support right now. This is an entire support zone when looking at those trend lines. Resistance, support, and support. So if price manages probably to break through this, there's a small downside potential here and downside potential here with trend lines and maybe a bit of a rally potential above this resistance to the targets. And here, uh, a bullish bounce potential. So let's take a look at that. I would say it seems to be the most likely thing to happen. Now, the hourly chart looks like it broke and is hooking back. So that's something to be cautious of. Uh, strong momentum to the downside on the hourly. So I'm not going to go long now, but uh, personally, unless you, unless I'm very um, confident about a strong confluence in a certain zone, I would not want to trade against momentum like that. I wouldn't say I'd never want to do that. But in this case, I don't think that the entire, let's say, uh, analysis wouldn't be strong enough for me to jump in a, in a long right now, considering the pretty choppy daily chart, but also the strong downtrend prior to that. I would not think that this this zone halfway this triangle is 
is is a very good idea. I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, it's, it's definitely something I'll talk to talk to you in a second how I think I can still trade it. But as you can see, just to give a bit of perspective, it's not uh, not not that great either, right? Just the entire the position of the Aussie here in the middle of that triangle after downtrend. All right, but still, price is at support when looking at the trend line. So how would that be possible to trade a potential bounce? Now, considering the momentum here, I would have to see my time factor will at least kick in, which means five to six candles not breaking this bottom at the very minimum. This is candle three, so I got at least a few hours to wait. If another few candles do not break this bottom, and then I see a bullish candle like this, and there's kind of like this this weakness here with the bullish candle. Uh, that could be a signal to try to trade the bounce off the trend line there. For a recovery rally. And uh, a recovery zigzag up to resistance again, I would say. I wouldn't aim for higher personally. I'll put a fit from here to here. And I think the 61.8 fit probably is a good target. A bit of a small supply demand zone there. So something like this, I think, seems to be uh, reasonable to expect. So 73.20, I think, would be the upside target. Now, don't get me wrong, price could eventually break higher, but I'm not sure if, if it's really worth anticipating a break through such a strong trend line. I think it's probably better to target that particular trend line. So that's how I see it. That's my two cents. Let's take a look at uh, the Kiwi. Kind of funky looking because of the strong, volatile a move up, then uh, kind of like a, a, I don't know, it seems like a ski slope here or a ski jumping slope. Um, from that point of view, a bit strange how it looks like, but um, I think we just made a name for a new, new chart pattern. Has, everyone, has anyone heard of a ski slope? Or ski, ski jumping chart pattern? I haven't either. I think we just created a new one. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we call it the Admiral Markets, uh, the Admiral Markets ski slope chart pattern. It's a bit long, but <laughs> I think it's bearish ski slope because uh, I don't know what it is actually. <laughs> ski slope is a new phenomenon. I guess we uh, phenomenon. I guess. Uh, we have to still see what it uh, proves to be. But I mean, I obviously was bear bullish on this Kiwi, right? So after this break, I'm not sure if Caitlin is in here. Let's see. Not today. Caitlin was also bullish. But, uh, and yeah, we did have a good break. However, a daily candle like that being bearish is, uh, it's kind of a, a weak sign of this this breakout. So there's a bit of a struggle here with the upside. And this could be an ABC zigzag to retest this trend line, for instance. I would probably just sit on the sidelines for a moment. I'm not... Obviously, it broke this trend line here, but that's a, not, not an easy trend line to put because it was a kind of a passive break. What I mean with passive break is when price just goes sideways. And by going sideways, it pushes through a trend line. Well, that's not really a breakout that is 
very desirable to trade. And uh, now Price is trying to make a rebound. But uh, this could easily be just part of a, a correction. So I don't see really any trade setup that I like at the moment here. But there is support, so let's take a look at the weekly. From a weekly perspective, it doesn't look that bad. Bullish candle, strong bullish candle, that looks bullish. So we can leave this fib on. Any of these fibs could be bouncing spots. No, I don't. I will wait and see first. I'm not. I'll keep an eye on that throughout the week, but not uh, not jumping for joy at the moment. The Kiwi, of course, also, just like, once again, the Pound, I also have interest rates. So that's something to be aware of. That's maybe why it also fell a bit that far. That far. Uh, but that's uh, um, that's tomorrow. And therefore, uh, maybe best just to stay out of that. All right. Donacad actually looks like it's breaking out with a good daily candle here. Strong candle. Close above the top. Close near the high. Bounce off the 38.2 fib and continuation. So from my point of view, a retracement, let me get rid of this fib. From my point of view, a retracement of that daily candle and a continuation is a good trade, I would say. Should be a profitable trade. All right, now will we get that retracement? I'm not sure, you can see prices hanging in here. So we might get one more upside before getting a retracement. I'll just keep this fib on unless it hits the minus 61.8 fib. If it hits the minus 272 target, uh, I wouldn't move it. It could hit the target and I retrace uh, down to the 23.6 or the 38.2 fib and still bounce and then move up to the 61.8. I don't see any interesting trend lines at the moment except maybe on a 50 minute chart. Let's take a look. Not really, there's this kind of box in here. So on a 50 minute chart, it might be worth um, trading to the upside, <coughs> sorry. And there's a small break potential here of about uh, 40 pips, which is okay on a 50 minute chart. It's small on a four hour chart, obviously. And this is a pretty strong momentum on hourly chart. We're looking at 32 candles not touching the 21 EMA band. So this EMA band is most likely, excuse me, is a high chance that this will turn into support when price does retrace back to it. So that just supports the, the idea that if it hits the 272 target and goes back to the moving hours, that that's a high likelihood of a bouncing spot. All right, on a lower time frame, I'll probably want to see a small little gap here on a five minute chart. See this turn up, uh, break above the 135.25. And uh, I would like to see it then make a small little retracement back to the moving averages that are now bullishly pointed up. And a bounce there should give the break pullback continuation effect. Uh, this is a five-minute chart, so it uh, might happen fast. It might not 
uh, be as uh, I don't know, maybe a bit different than uh, looking at a four-hour chart. So be aware of that. But that's what I would expect. And I, the, the bounce basically, I would find interesting if it bounces, it goes back and bounces off this level. Now, even the breakout here is not uh, that bad, in fact. And might uh, be perfectly fine uh, as a trade with a stop loss below these bottoms or these bottoms here. But personally, I'd rather wait. I would rather just let it prove itself to me. I would rather just rather uh, see it break and hook back than, uh, than take it right here. Anyhow, it's now at resistance. But even here at the break of this moving averages, All right, which one can we take a look at? Let's take a look at mm -mm -mm. Let's take a look at Urien and Pounyan. Urien uh, was challenging the support channel. I remember we were talking about that channel to the downside and saying that here's not really much space. Uh, but it was breaking below it, so perhaps it would have been a continuation consolidation. But no, it turned indeed out to be a, a bit of an underthrow. And ultimately, price using the channel for bounce. Obviously, it was news inspired, it was news related, but still it happened. And uh, we saw a pretty pretty big impulse uh, to the upside after that. And there was kind of like a uh, a cup here. Was it cup and handle, I think? Looks like a cup and handle. If you, Let me use a orange color here. No, a let me use a pink color. I think this is how it looks like. Ah. I think that's the cup and handle. Something like that in any case. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me get rid of this trend line. Anyhow, now we're back at the resistance. From a weekly perspective, uh, this is actually looking more like a corrective channel. We had impulse to the downside and to the upside. So what I'm suspecting is that already a long time, I think that this could be a three-wave correction to make a head and shoulders, and then we can move down like this. So that's what I'm looking at. So that first step would mean a break of this channel to the upside. All right. Now looking at the hour, it looks very similar to the euro dollar. Price bouncing up to 23.6 fib. The only thing is a bit different with the euro dollar is that there's a resistance trend line right here. So no, I think I'll have to wait on this one. But from a daily perspective, I'm certainly curious if yeah, if price can break through this trend line. I'm not going to trade it right away, but uh, that would mean a potential for a bigger breakout, and I'll keep an eye on. Uh, on that, if, if there's any setup that I like, for instance, if there's a strong daily candle like this, I might look for a retracement halfway that candle and to the trend line and look for a long right there. All 
All right, pound yen broke through support. Don't see anything really interesting here. Too messy. Pound on. Oh, we take a look at pound these things. Sure. Last week I was uh, I was bearish on New Ze uh, bullish on New Zealand's, but obviously tomorrow we have an interest rate, so that we we'll have to see how that uh, rate decision impacts the Kiwi. But still more bearish at the moment. We might see a bit of retracement here. Ultimately, if we break to this bottom, we should see a fall down to the minus 272 target. Now we can use these single trend lines, of course, to anticipate breaks like this. This was actually a kind of a rising wedge. Uh, we also could connect tops like this. And tops like this. So it seems to be more of a resistance spot here. And this seems to be a breakout to the downside, I would say. A breakout with the stop loss. I would say above these trend lines is, should be enough. Well, you never know for sure, but I mean, I think that I wouldn't see any reason why it should be higher than that. But you know, with the pound New Zealand, unfortunately, it uh, still adds up to uh, more than a, probably more than a hundred, uh, even on the 50 minute chart, just because this pound New Zealand moves that much. Now, I think there's a small little consolidation zone that worries me a bit here. Which limits the take profit to 60. That would be too tight. So from that point of view, uh, I'm not sure if this is... It's 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 definitely a breakout. I'm not sure about the profit potential is really enough to compensate the risk, but uh, so that's a bit of a question mark in my my view. I'm not sure if uh, if you see the same, but this to me is a supply demand zone. I would be leery of that. Obviously, if the target is put somewhere here, it's R two R is good, or maybe here even the previous bottom. R two R is is okay. But then I'm not sure about the chance that price will break through this zone without giving a bounce. Like this. So what I might do is, is wait for a, a pullback back to the channel again, a hook back here. Pion yeah, I skipped that one basically because I didn't find it interesting. And, and, and the reason was it's just because of the moving average is very flat, intertwined, price action, very flat. I got this resistance right in here. Support down in here and support here. And just looks quite messy. We broke this trend line, but price has gone, gone sideways as well. So it seems like a consolidation zone, sideways kind of movement within a sideways movement, and it doesn't really appeal to me. Maybe on a 50 minute chart, it looks better. Let's take a look.
Yeah, there is some good momentum here. But I don't see any trend line that there was a trend line in the past, like this one. If we connect maybe these bottoms like this, it's not a very good trend line. Maybe these bottoms like this, those are trend line breaks, perhaps. That could have made sense. Also, this trend line, the resistance trend line. Um, interesting one, but at the moment I don't see any trend line that I find very interesting. On this chart we can connect these tops as well, but I don't see really something that I would like to trade personally. But if you see something and you're curious, what about my opinion, uh, definitely let me know. Always open and uh, interested in seeing other perspectives so by all means your eye is already continuing unlike the your dollar which is uh, still fighting this trend line as I said I would like to see it fight that trend line and then the euro is a bit different because it actually it hit the fib already and bounced off the fib and continued here it uh, No, I kind of missed the 38.2 fit, but anyhow, it broke the channel, broke this flag without kind of stopping here. That can happen sometimes. And made a bit of a break, as you can see here. Broke the channel, made a small little pause here on the 50 minute chart. That sometimes could be enough. Broke above it, bull flag, and then it break again. So the euro odd. In a continuation as already as as we can see this could be the kind of the blueprint that the euro dollar will follow as well by the way right momentum correction break of momentum smaller consolidation zone within momentum and then continuation of the continuation right because this is break or the first impulse this is pullback this is the continuation and within the continuation we have a break pullback and continuation. So if you put a fib, what could be the target for the euro odd? It could be 150, 150. There's still a lot of space left. And I'll put a fib on the four hour breakout candle, which is this one. And you can see price already respected the 38.2 fib of the four hour breakout candle. And now close to the minus 272 target. All right, let's take a look. Target is 151.30 here, the main target, which could be a resistance spot and turnaround level for uh, an ABC zigzag. That's something to keep an eye on. And the other could be, I would now because it's uh, it seems to be pretty close. Uh, let me one second. Let me add a moving average. I would probably have to see price move back down into these FIBs, either again the 38.2 or 61.8 before a move up again is interesting in my perspective. 
taking a trade right here with the stop loss here and a target here is not interesting. Uh, stop loss here, I think, is uh, it could be possible. It could be possible, but it's still a bit risky. I would probably rather wait maybe for this hour candle to close. If it closes bullish like that, then a retracement of the hourly candle um, might be enough already. It doesn't maybe have to get back that deep. But if it retraces, sorry, if it closes with a wick on top, then I would still expect a bit deeper retracement into this zone. So let's see if this candle closes bullish. If it closes bullish, then I would probably expect it to go only about halfway to uh, this hour until this zone right in here. So that needs to close bullish and the next hour retrace. If it doesn't clo close bullish or if it closes with a wick or a large wick, then I would still be cautious of a retracement like this and then it bounce again. All right, you understand there's nothing different than the other euros. It could be a zigzag as well. All right, that's my uh, view. Does does anyone uh, agree or, or disagree or uh, or want to share uh, some some views on one pair? Do you want to see a other pair maybe that we haven't looked at? Are you interested in any particular pair for a potential trade? Do you have any trade ideas in mind? In the meantime, as uh, I give you a bit of time to think about the, the questions, we have uh, webinars on Wednesday as always, of course, as well. Strategy, same time, same place. We have in the evening, then it's going to take a look at uh, profit stops, how to manage your trades. Thursday evening, then at the night, together, take a look at building a forex strategy from scratch, taking a look at how you can, uh, what kind of steps you should look at and uh, things you need to consider when developing your own custom made strategy. Market heat map, by the way, showing your odd a big mover. And here we can see a bit more of the currencies. Pound New Zealand, there's always a big mover here in New Zealand as well. Big, big downside on the Kiwis. You're out here. This is showing the last two days. So this is the starting position two days ago, and this was yesterday. <clears throat> so you're out really moving a lot to the upside. <laughs> and this one is New Zealand yen. Didn't move twice in a row, two days in a row, didn't move anywhere. But the first day it had a lot of volatility, and the second day a lot less. And on the Admiral Markets website, you can find technical analysis as well. And here you can see Nana talk about the dollar cat uptrend as well. And here you can see uh, odd yen analysis. Take a look, all kind of analysis there. But the uh, dollar yen, dollar cat, sorry, also Nana's view here.
All right. Uh, are they live chart? I'm not sure what the what the question means. This is a live chart. Of course, these screenshots uh, we saw on the website is is a, is a it's a snapshot, right? Because it's a it's a screenshot. And Beverly says that uh, it makes sense. It's good, and we've covered most of the uh, the pairs. Okay, great. I think we can only take maybe a look at uh, let's see a dollar Swissy maybe. I'm not a big fan of the Swissies at this point. Too choppy. But last week was a big down day on the dollar Swiss as well. Pound cat could be, by the way, something to look at. Pound cat in a big correction, bouncing off the 38.2 and fib and uh, moving averages after a pretty strong impulse here. Right here is the momentum. This is the correction, this is support, this is a consolidation zone, and it looks like we're trying to, price is about to break out that zone. So this could be something of interest maybe after the pound news event. As it maybe breaks, pullbacks, and continues. That's something on my radar list or watch list. All right, I don't trade the DAX, but it's pretty interesting how it did, how it happened here. It's kind of like a bounce, break, pullback, continuation off the trend line and off the 38.2 fib up to target. Then bounce off the target pretty strongly, but still respecting that same 78.6 fib. Yeah, it's a strong bearish candle, that's for sure. Weekly candle. Still, I would say it needs to break below this before really more downside could be expected, perhaps to retest this bottom again. continuing lower yet again after a bit of a pullback here falling again so that could be a breakout once it breaks the bottom 272 target at 31 this could be a downside I don't trade uh, um, commodities so but if I would have to analyze it then that's that's what it seems like it's ready to do if it breaks that bottom let's see gold and silver showing a bit of a bounce S&P going nowhere at the moment. And the NASDAQ, let's see. Same thing, really. Doji last week, right at resistance. Looking like a bit of an ascending wedge, though. Sitting on the sidelines, I guess, till that uh, till next week, I would say. Yeah, nothing special there. Uh, do do you see something particular, maybe? Um, 
Beverly, I'm missing. Let's see. Got another bullish candle, though. Did post a new higher high, though. Last month. Yeah, the webinar is uploaded to YouTube uh, on Admiral Markets' YouTube channel. All these New Zealands still have the same problem with the interest rate, I would say. So we can skip those. Yeah, I think that's really the, the most important there. So from that point of view, uh, I think we discussed everything. Still a few minutes left to the top of the hour. We can take a look at uh, the hourly candle. And in the meantime, in those last few minutes, I would like to like warn you again one more time about the MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition that you can download. For those that are using it already, you can download a new version with six more updates than already existing. Those are new ones, and the new ones include uh, some in interesting uh, things, some new things, and some, some things that already exist but that are useful for those that are less technical, like a high-low indicator, pivot points, Renko, uh, new things include order history, indicator, multiple multiple stops, time stop, which means that you can use trend, basically horizontal lines to uh, to exit and make them exits, basically. Also, time left to the next bar. We can take a look at that. We've got a few minutes left. Why not? Could be interesting. Let's say we want to take a look at the pound cad and see how long uh, this four-hour chart has to go. So what you can do is go to indicators here, add on market, uh, let's see, local time, no, that was the local time, freehand drawing, candle countdown, sorry, that's it, you see pivot, Renko, spread indicator, just drag it on, local time, order history, high low, There's some things you can change where it is, the label position, by the way, for instance. That's something you might want to change if it's the bottom right or if it's, you know, et cetera. Or if you want to ha have it near price. Somehow nothing appears. I don't know why it was working yesterday. I did download it again. A new MT4 version. Mine was, my old one was uh, being a bit slow, so I downloaded a new one. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll do that uh, later on. Anyhow, it shows in the bottom right, it shows how much time is left, which is sometimes useful. All right, that's the top of the hour. Your dollar. And this could be the hit I'm talking about. This little kind of doji here could uh, could cause a small dip. So what all I need is really just a small one. Hopefully not too big. Otherwise, the break will probably not happen, actually. Another trend line we can think about is this one. Uh, specifically, if it breaks through this fractal, uh, that could actually be an opposite break within that channel, down to the 50 fib. And bottom of the channel, let's see. Could also be something to keep an eye on. Your odd, that's a strong candle. So if it retraces... Put a fib on that candle. And uh, let's see.
yeah, about 50 percent. Any of these fibs, preferably fifty or lower. I don't think this bottom should break, so that could be a stop loss level below 150.10. Target here at 151.25. If the entry is at the 38.2 fib, is at 50.55, which would be about 70, 65 target and a 50 risk. That's okay. If it's the entry at the 50 fib, that would mean 75 target and 40 risk. So that's better. 50 fib seems better. All right, let me see how that goes throughout the day. Got two questions. Adoptive, I'm not sure actually, MJ. Uh, I don't use the RSI myself. So I'm not 100% sure. Maybe maybe now that we know. What is the name of the orange-green indicator on the chart? Let's see. Orange-green indicator on the chart. This is a moving average. It's a MA indicator, which uh, changes color depending on the angle. So if it's bullishly angled, it will be green. If it's bearishly angled, it will be orange. Or you can make it any color you want. If you're interested in the indicator, I can send it to you. Just send me an email to I'll send you the address, my email address, one second. There you go. Alrighty, it's in the uh, it's in the in the chat box. All right, so thank you for joining. Wish you all good trading. Let's see, uh, today should be uh, no massive news events, so that should be still uh, a bit more doable. But tomorrow, Thursday, uh, got some big things going on next week, Wednesday. So let's see. Be careful, and uh, wish you good trading, and hope to see you soon. Cheers.